Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for my ongoing review of the Complete 8 Ball Issues 1 through 18 by Dan Klaus. I'm doing it an issue at a time, and starting with the last issue, issue 11, I started actually uh, really enjoying the book. Previous issues, people following along, I apologize, I was kind of complaining as Klaus was complaining. But uh, I think that starting with issue 11, he really reevaluated what he was doing, and I think you get full-powered Klaus now coming into issue 12. So we get the hand-done ads, which are fun. I guess if I had more time, I would go through and read all of these because I'm sure there's funny little jokes. I, I used to love getting like a Chris Ware book and just going through all of the silly hand-drawn ads that he did, but uh, that stuff just doesn't appeal to me anymore. It's probably just a time thing. I just don't have the time to do that. Then we get a nice little short story here called Glue Destiny. Uh, it's pretty dark. It definitely leans into Klaus's Charles Burns influence. Like you get drawings like that, that to me are just, well, a lot of the images on this are very Charles Burns, people out in the woods, that kind of stuff. Um, this piece here, I really want to know how he did it. It looks like he's using some kind of markers and colored inks or gouache or something. Or there's, there's something like with this piece where I really, I really like this production trick and it's something that I've been wanting to try for a while where you get a piece of vellum or something and you re-ink your grays with black and then you just adjust that to be a gray. But you can tell it's like hand done because of the, um, the hatching that he gets. You can tell it's been done with the brush. So I don't know if that same trick has been done with like multiple layers of color here. Uh, it doesn't look like it. This looks like this exists this way physically. So my best guess for all these flat colors is markers, uh, watercolors, and, and gouache. But I'm not quite sure. It's a really lovely look. I don't know. He must be... Klaus seems like the kayfabe guys, and like me and Sean, really interested in old production techniques. So I'm assuming this is some old production technique that he went and mastered and then did a story with it. And it's just really lovely. It's just absolutely lo lovely, lovely looking stuff. And I, I could see like why people just hold Klaus in the highest regard when you're looking at stuff like this. I need, I probably need to get that Klaus artist edition. I bet that explains how this one was done. I really like this story. And he is going on about hippies and freaks and like the typical kind of underground comic stuff that he would normally address. But he's just like doing it in a more positive way. Like right here, they're talking about, oh, we're going to go watch the freaks and the pigs fight in the park, you know, but well, not fight, but uh, they're saying the pigs versus the freaks in the park tonight. And then when you get to the actual pigs versus the freaks, you realize what it is is a bunch of like punk rock hipster hippie kids playing volleyball against the police and so there's like that bit of positivity creeping into what he's doing of like look uh, it's not just fuck the man fuck everybody like you get in the early issues it's like hey look you know like why couldn't we come together and have a volleyball game and then it's you know it goes back to these typical like um misanthropic characters that you get with Klaus but they've been through like a, a little bit more of a narrative arc which is interesting and there's some more positivity so quite enjoy it. and just I mean come on it's the art is amazing phenomenal stuff always with the letter pages I always enjoy there's always one name I recognize so in here you have Joe Matt sent, at, sent in a uh, letter and he's basically telling Klaus like hey you know you're a really good cartoonist but um, try something longer and more serious. Like, what's with all these kind of just one-off stupid gags like the fish fucker type of thing? He's like, these are funny, but I, with this ghost world thing that you started in the last issue, I really, he says, something elevated, ghost world, closer to the realm of art. I wish it had run for the entire issue or three or four issues. I wish that was your approach. And I think Klaus is actually, what he likes having this little, I, again, I'm not reading all the letters because you know, it's they're 25 years old now or whatever. It doesn't really matter to me. But it does seem like he likes the hate coming from the audience. But he's also processing it and thinking about it. And and he is growing up on a public stage. So that's cool. That's really fun to see. Uh, you get here even he's got King Ego, which is him like getting ready to read the mail. And this is actually kind of funny. I like this. Even though it's right under Joe Matt saying knock it off with the one-offs. I think this is appropriate place for a one-off because it's part of the, it's just a joke, a gag with the letter pages. And it's like, yay, all my letters. And then it's just all of the crazy things that people could send to you. Some of them are great. You know, it's like 
Uh, they're putting the, their little comics that they're sent to him. Another's like a death threat, shredded candy wrappers, um, a fanzine that wants him to contribute that he can't, and they're mad at him. So it's it, that seems like real, uh, all real stuff. Like the envelope filled with shredded candy wrappers is probably something that uh, really happened. Also, an inmate who wants to send him some comics for free or who wants Klaus to send the inmate some comics for free. So those are probably all real things. That's funny. Then we go back to the Dan Pussy character. And again, this is instead of like just taking shots at the comic industry for the comic, all of a sudden we've got a little bit more of a sympathetic character. We've got uh, Pussy as a kid, like learning to be an artist. And you kind of see his bad family life and him getting picked on. I really like this um, two panel sequence spread across two pages here of the same character being drawn, but just at different ages. And you get to see uh, Dan Pussy's evolution as an artist. And just, you know, this, this stuff is more empathetic and sympathetic. Like I can relate to it. You know, I always related to Klaus stuff. Like I've been saying, it's always like the bad side of me, but this is like relates to the, the good side of me. You know, that kid that really just loved art and wanted to be art. And like the, the cute girls at school are coming to him and he's all nervous and they're like, Hey, can you do our Valentine's dance poster? And he's like excited. They're asking him, but they're like, what the, what is this like superhero bullshit? So I just think it's a, even though it's still critical, it's a more fair picture, you know, it's a more like loving picture of his own comic book self. I, I feel like a lot of it is just Klaus was pushing against himself, you know, his own desires that he felt were bad. And uh, he just like leaned into the even worse ones to deal with it for some reason. But now he's like starting to be forgiving of himself a little bit, it feels like. So, uh, you know, it's just it, it's nice to see here. I noticed he. He meets a character named Bruce Sally. I, I have to wonder if that's um, meeting Zach Sally. I don't know how, how long ago Zach was operating, but I know he's been doing the recidivist for a while. So that would be interesting. I, I don't know if that's a specific reference or if that's just someone he knows in real life that he's doing a shout out with. Um, but yeah, I like this quite a bit better. I had to laugh at this scene where his parents find a playboy under his bed and they're like, oh God, thank goodness he's not gay, which you know, like in the late 80s, early 90s was still something that parents were worried about. I I know my parents worried about me for the exact same thing. It's like, well, he never talks about girls. He's just drawing buff guys all the time. And it's like, no, you know, like I like women. I'm just absolutely terrified of them. So I, you know, I can like relate to those things. And um, I, I'm not feeling judged or I'm not feeling like just complained at like in the early issues. It's, it's really nice. And then Ghost World, I, I agree with uh joe matt that this feels like Klaus has leveled up to like his full mature self now he's he's taking all of the same like angsty gen x kid thing but instead of making it, it strictly autobio i mean i feel like there's probably a lot of him in these characters still but instead of making it strictly autobiographical he's actually writing fiction so now we can see Klaus really as a writer like i don't people who do autobiography like yeah there's obviously better or worse writers but i don't feel like you're really being a writer in the sense of like someone who writes fiction that they just having to come up with these scenarios come up with these dialogues of course they're probably drawing from real life but that seems like a whole other skill and now we really see Klaus leaning into it i don't even feel like the velvet glove cast and iron really taps into that because it's that real surreal no real structure just making stuff up as you go i don't think that really gives a chance for a writer to show their ability to write a story and i feel like that's coming in a full bore with ghost world and it's it's matching my memories of it both the comic and the movie like i'm looking at this drawing of uh bob skietis and uh, i think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced skietis based on the ski at tees based on how she says it here um i love that drawing of him he he's exactly like the she calls him a he's like a grizzly old con man like don knots with a homeless tan <laughs> he drew it exactly like that but also looking at this knowing that steve buscemi played that guy in the movie it's like oh yeah that's that's so perfect uh so really enjoying this um really enjoying the dialogue really enjoying the story here the art is great, of course. You still have Klaus' critical ability 
now turned like towards society in general instead of to specific people. That's always what felt so gross about the early stuff is he's doing these grotesque characters of people which were accurate and funny but mean spirited. Here it's now turned it to society and he's like, ah, these, you know, they're selling Molo tweens, but it looks like a big dick going at a vagina on this this cover here. And why why aren't can't advertisers just, you know, if they really want it to be a photo of a penis, put a penis on there. Why why they gotta be so Kind of sub subversely crass or something like that, and then the the Satanist buying the bunch of Lunchables and just all those kind of little moments really come together to make a pleasurable reading experience. It's fun. It's smart. It has all of what makes Klaus Klaus in it, but it's like into a palatable congealed whole that actually feels like it's going somewhere narratively and saying something and this feels like the real picture of gen x that he's been trying to paint uh he just kind of needed to work out 10 issues or so of like doing it himself to be able to then put it into a character so really really quite enjoying um from here on from issue 11 and 12 and i'm assuming i'm going to continue to enjoy the rest of the book because the the shift seems to be happening at a fast pace so Really enjoyed this issue. Really appreciate everyone sticking with me as I stick with the book and, and try and sort out my feelings about it. I hope you've all been enjoying it. If you do enjoy what we're doing here, not just in this video series, but with the channel, the two ways you can support us are through our Patreon. The Patreon's awesome. That has some different tiers of voting that you can do, some polls, some exclusive content that I'm preparing for it now. And then that money that we get from there just goes back into buying the books that we review. The second way that you can support us, and probably the most important, is to support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of the books that Living the Line has. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to uh, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like, kind of three-color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell, and then you get them.